Welcome to lesson 12 of how to understand Quranic grammar series. If you're new here, this series is all about the basics of Arabic grammar that is used in the Noble Quran. Whatever you learn here will directly help you understand the Quran better along with the Quran vocabulary series. And it could also be used to improve your Arabic knowledge even outside the Quran. So what have we done in the past 11 lessons? Well, we learned that in Arabic, any word is either ism, fi'l, or harf. We have analyzed the basic rules relating to ism in these lessons. And we've also learned a lot about Arabic verbs and how they are derived in these lessons. If you want to revisit them or learn from the beginning, I will leave their links in the description. And now, the only thing that is left is harf. And this is exactly the main focus of this lesson and other lessons to come, insha'Allah. So, let's get started. The word harf in Arabic literally means a letter. But in terms of grammar, it is best translated into a particle. And this is going to be the translation to use in this lesson as long as we are talking about grammar. But what is a particle exactly? A particle is a word that has little or no meaning in itself. It is used with nouns or verbs to complete the meaning of a sentence. The meaning of the particle will depend on the word with which it is used. So, for example, the word for is a particle, and in itself, it doesn't really have much meaning. Not like chair, for example. But when we say, he looked for his book, in this case, the word for gave the meaning of trying to find to the verb look, and it is therefore acquired a certain meaning. So, look for means try to find. However, if we say, he applied for a job. In this case, the word for has a different meaning, which would then be to make an official request. So the meaning of the particle depends on the context in which it was used. So now we know what a particle or harf is. How many particles or huruf are there in Arabic? And what's the best way to learn them? Well, in Arabic, there are dozens of particles. But to make it easier, they can be categorized according to the case ending they inflict on the words coming after them. To understand more about case ending and what it means, please check out this lesson. So this means that we have four categories of particles in Arabic. First, particles of jar or kasra, or in Arabic, huruf al-jar. So these ones cause the words after them to have kasra. The second type is particles of nasb or fatha. In Arabic, we call them huruf and nasb, which causes the word after them to have fatha. The third type is particles of jazm or sukun. And in Arabic, we call them huruf al-jazm which, as you might already have guessed, causes the word after them to have sukun. And lastly, are the flexible particles. And these flexible particles can cause the noun after them to have any kind of case ending. So let's start with the first category, which is huruf al-jar, or the particles that cause the words after them to have kasra as case ending. There are 10 particles in total, which are closely related to the Qur'an. So this means that there is more than 10, but these are the ones that we are going to focus on. Each one of these 10 has a single or multiple related meanings, which we'll discover now one by one. You will see that some particles are only attached to another word, and some can be used separately and also attached to other words. The attached ones are all single letters. And they are Wa, 
ت ك ب and لي and the other group that can be attached or be used separately are من إلى على في عن and now we'll start discussing the first group the next group will be discussed the next lesson inshallah first the ta and wa will be discussed together these two are called huruf al qasam or the particles of swearing which are used in the quran when allah swears by himself or any of his creations like what we see in these examples وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَطُورِ سِينِينَ فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ these were the examples for using wa as a particle for swearing. The next examples are for ta. Qalu tallahi innaka lafi dalalika al-qadim. Another example. وَتَاللَّهِ لَأَكِيدَنَّ أَصْنَامَكُمْ بَعْدَ أَن تُوَلُّوا مُدْبِرِينَ The first thing that we notice is that these two particles are attached only to nouns, or in Arabic, to ism only. And the second thing that we notice is that the noun attached to them has kasra as a case ending, which is exactly the expected function of huruf al-jar, or particles of jar. Let's move to the next particle, which is the ka. Ka means as, or like. And we see it used in these examples. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا Here we also notice that the particle كَ is only attached to nouns and causes the noun after them to have kasra. The next one is the particle B. And this particle means in, with, or through. We see it used like in this example. Next example. وَأَنذِرْ بِهِ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَن يُحْشَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ And here we can notice right away that this particle can be attached to nouns like the word الحق. So we have بِالْحَق but it can also be attached to pronouns, which in this case, the ha pronoun, in the second example, bihi. And the last particle of this group is li. And this particle means to or for. And we see it used with these meanings in these examples. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ 
And here we notice a number of things. The first is that the particle li can be used with nouns and pronouns, just like the particle bi. The second thing we notice is that the particle itself, li, has kasra under the lam. But when it is attached to a pronoun, it turns into fatha. So we say le, lehum. So when we add the pronoun hum, for example, we don't say lihum, but we say lehum, which is exactly what we saw in this example. That's why. When we add this particle to different pronouns like he, hum, huma, hunna, the lam will always have fatha on top of it. So we say lehu, lehum, lehuma, lehunna. So don't let this confuse you. It is the very same particle, but the kasra under it changes into fatha when it is attached to any pronoun. Finally, you will also notice that when lam is added to a noun that starts with a definite article, al, that the hamza from the definite article is completely dropped. In other words, the word annas starts with hamzat al-wasl and lam. But when we add the particle li to the beginning of the word, it becomes Linnas, which is, as we can see, written without Hamzat al-Wasl at all. The reason is simply because Hamzat al-Wasl is dropped when the word is attached to anything before it. So, to recap what we've learned today. Particles in Arabic achieve their meaning from the context they are in. They have no meaning on their own. And they can be categorized according to their effect on the word coming after them. We have particles of jar, particles of nasb, particles of jazm, and flexible particles. And today we learn the first part of the particles of jar, which are 10 particles, five that have to be attached to another word, and another five that could be used separately or attached. We started today with the first kind, which are the particles that have to be attached to something else. We learned that te, we, and ke can only be attached to nouns, and they always cause the nouns after them to have kasra, while bi and li can be attached to both nouns and pronouns as well. Thanks for watching. If you want to start your journey to learn the Tajweed of the Qur'an, you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.